All right, folks, here we go. Hillbilly Computer Crate Challenge 2021. I got the first few steps done. I found a crate, a nice yellow crate. Unfortunately, it's already kind of janked up. It's got uh, a broken piece up here. I'll do something with that later. And on the inside of this thing, I got an Intel i7 second generation. Uh, 2600 I believe. I believe it's a uh, 8 core. Got 16 gigs of RAM in there. I got it in here just with two zip ties. It can't really move around too much, but uh, I want to make sure I keep all the boxes for the zip ties on the inside because sometimes those things can uh, uh, give you a bad time on a bad day if you catch them the wrong way. You got to cut those things flush too because if you cut those things the wrong way, they will cut you if you have a damp hand. Anyways, let's see what else we can get into this system next. So this motherboard that I got uh, was given to me by someone. Uh, the thing was I just had to wipe the hard drive and I could keep the piece and here I have another piece from a computer case that uh, I ended up using the case with a different uh, power supply and this gives us 350 watts and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip tie and I'm gonna glue it literally right to the side of the case right there so let's start getting to that the thing about Gorilla Glue is you got to make it, you got to make stuff a little bit damp getting into it. And you got to remember to strap things down because it'll flex back and forth, right? You got to, yeah, you got to make sure it's good and strapped down. This isn't really glue so much as an epoxy. And this is very redneck and I don't recommend you doing this, but it'll help it from uh, flexing away basically. I gotta gotta hold it there basically for an hour. It takes an hour to uh, it takes an hour to harden, 24 hours to cure. So I put that power supply in the wrong spot, and I only found out because I tried to run this freaking cable, and it wouldn't reach the corner. Arr! So I had to zip tie it up at the side. I zip tied it through the vents and the vents to the vents, and then after I was done that, I zip tied a power button. USB and an old school like 32-in-1 adapters, uh, PCMCIA SD, micro SD, USB, all that fun stuff. I'm gonna have a USB 3.0 card sitting right here, and I have to figure out what I'm gonna scrounge up for a video card. Then uh, we'll see how she goes. All right, so here we got phase two of the Redneck Rampage computer. Um, what do we got? Uh, yeah, zip tied in stuff to the bottom over on the right there. Once again, this thing's going to be compatible with damn near anything. We got the Kingston hard drive on the left. Once again, that power supply is in the perfect place in the middle on the left. Man, that one cable run really messed me up. I got all the, the <laughs> Gorilla Glue cleaned off of it, though. I'm getting just enough space for uh, the cables back there. I really like this setup. Now, I, I already gave this thing a benchmark with Passmark 10, and it got a score of about 300, which is just a little bit over some of the worst systems that I run into. I installed a GTX 10 or 710, and I'm going to see what kind of better score I can get from that. Oh, here we go. We got the space shuttles going by at 16 frames per second. Space shuttles. Chips. Jet ships. Here we got DirectX 10 going by at, uh, well, 5 to 0.7 frames per second. I've seen worse. Next up, DirectX 11, 17 frames per second. Looking pretty good. See them space jellyfish? And then we'll check out the rotate to the Earth. Yeah, not so bad, not so bad. Here we got the DirectX 12 rocking at about 7 frames per second. Penalized by 60% plus three frames per second okay yeah so that significantly raised the uh the power of the system it's interesting to find out uh, when the 710 is actually going to help and in this case with the uh second generation i7 2600 it definitely more than doubled the speed i must say i really enjoy and i get a real kick out of creating milk crate system computers because you can do it without screws you can just use the spaces between the plastic to zip tie things up and it'll sit there very nicely. Now, of course, it's easy to get uh, little fingers in there, so you want to make sure you keep this up and away from the kids. Next up, let's have a look at Fortnite. We're getting 30 frames per second. Check it out. We're actually getting some visuals on the side of the bus. Everything on the bottom looks like, uh, geez, it looks like it's got some kind of progressive scan thing going on. But I am still getting 30 frames per second. We're going to go talk to the orb. You can see that that orb looks very PlayStation, no, uh, post-PlayStation 3, I'll say. That says a lot about uh, the game we're going to get.
First one to hit the grounds, get the guns. Oh! Pew, 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 pew. Did he just hang out up? Did, what? So yeah, she definitely performs when it comes to Fortnite. Now let's see what kind of Bitcoin mining we can get out of this operation. Now I was a little bummed out that I couldn't play Grand Theft Auto V on this. Uh, the CPU just doesn't have enough power apparently. But, but... I can at least hash out 10 cents a day mining Monero and being paid out for it in Bitcoin. Yeah, not so bad. Well, no Lambo to the moon for me today. That pretty much finishes off the uh, the initial build. I got her working. I got her in there. Stay tuned for part two where I make her freaking rugged eyes beautiful. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for me. Now from Nasdaq Bits. Stick around. Let's see how she does. Have a good one.